Hello. Everybody's coming in now. You're all very welcome. I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes and let everybody join. Oh, lots of you. Hi. Just give that a couple more minutes now. Oh, lots of you are joining. You're all so welcome. Just a few more minutes. Maybe we'll go till 32 minutes past and let everybody get in. Also, there is a chat function, um, I think, or a Q&A. And in there, I will be able to answer all your questions at the end. But I actually have a few questions that you guys emailed ahead of time. So I will be sure to cover those as well. I think the attendees are slowing down now. Okay. Well, anyway, you're all so welcome. My name is Pamela Laird, and I'm really excited to be here with 14 Day Manicure at one of their very first masterclasses, but one of many, one of many to come. Um, my background is in beauty fully, but I'm probably best known as a nail technician. I do a lot of um, photo shoots, a lot of celebrity clients. Um, so I've got a lot of experience in nails, but most of my experience actually is in a salon doing gel manicures. So I'm really excited to share my tips with you. I think it's so exciting how popular at-home manicures have gotten over the last few years, and I want to make sure you're getting the most from it. And so do 14 Day Manicure. They're one of the best known brands. They actually have over 400 nail shades. I know because I've been browsing, picking some of my favorite colors, and I'm actually going to be using a gorgeous one today, which I'll be showing you shortly. Um, they also save you money. So obviously over the last few years, getting used to doing things at home, a bit of DIY. We're all much more confident now. Um, it takes minutes. It lasts up to weeks and you can change the color when you're bored. I think for a lot of people committing to a nail shade when you go to the salon and you pay is difficult, whereas at home you can have fun with your nails. Um, so I'm really excited to talk you through that today. And practice makes perfect. So we will be running these masterclasses to turn you pro. And I hope to be giving you all my expert tips. A few more people have just joined there. So just to let you know, there is a Q&A section. So if you have any questions, questions stick them in there I won't be doing it as we go but I will definitely get to it at the end and I think I'm going to get started now the entrance of slow down so again you're all so welcome to the first masterclass now I'm going to turn on my other camera where you can see my hand so let's just get that started hang on now wouldn't be me if I didn't have a technical issue with it. Hang on. Now advanced. Sorry, guys, give me one second now. I see one of your questions come in already. I'll be talking about chipping. Two seconds. Sorry, guys, this had worked perfectly beforehand in the Murphy's Law. One second now. Make sure that camera is on. Hmm. I'm very sorry about this. Let me just keep going one second. Should we plug it out and plug it back in? Okay. Does not like me today. I'm so sorry, guys. This was working perfectly about five minutes ago. Um, I'm gonna try one more time and then I will crack on without it. Yay. Okay. So keep the questions coming. I see lots of them piling in there. But what I really want to start with, which I think is actually going to answer a lot of your questions, is prep. So whether you've got the startup kit at home, which is this guy here, this comes with everything you need. Sorry, I'll show it on this camera. 
This has everything you need for full prep, but I will give you some of my expert tips to help with shipping. And there's a fantastic way to do to do gel manicures. There's my way. So I have just a few extra things. If you've got nails that are prone to chipping, if you've oily nail beds, any of those things will affect how long your nails last when you do it at home, especially. So follow these tips. Um, you'll also get a recording. So if you don't have the kit yet, you can use my code PAMELA10 and pick it up after and follow along with this later. But you will get this implement in your um, starter kit. So this has two sides to it. This little pointy side and then a flatter side. So I'm going to start with the flatter side. Cuticle prep is key. And the reason is because the cuticle here has living tissue that goes onto the nail bed. So it's really, really important that you get rid of all of that because that's going to cause lifting. So the first thing to do is to use the flat side of the cuticle pusher and simply push back the skin folds. After you've done that, you can use this sort of pointy side to scoop out any little extra bits that are going to be on the nail and I saw a question come through um, on emails about cuticle nipping now there are fantastic tools that you can pick up on the 14 day manicure site that will help if you do get hang nails so that would be if a, if a piece of skin is is kind of falling over the edge here I tend not to cut unless absolutely necessary the reason being is because it's living tissue you really want to be as gentle as possible you don't want to go in really really harshly here because what you can do is stimulate the growth of the cuticle and what we want to do is gently tame them backwards you can probably see I hope the camera's very showing my skin I need to up my hand cream now <laughs> after seeing my hands in this um certainly 4k anyway it feels but you can probably see just scooping around will get rid of any of that that's left over and give you the most perfect flawless base I think the best way to describe it which a lot of people don't think about when they think of their nails like you're applying makeup you make sure your your face is clean you exfoliate the same thing for your cuticles and your nails you want to make sure you've got the perfect base especially when you're hoping something lasts two weeks three weeks which 14 day manicure does so you can probably see I hope you can see that there that there's little white bits it's really important that we get all of that off and what you might notice is and for a lot of you at home if you don't do this regularly, pushing the cuticles back will actually give you a bit more nail. So it'll give you more room. You won't need to have your nails as long to get the full impact of the color. So I'm not going to spend too long doing this, but just to show you, that's exactly what you're looking for. A really, really good, clean prep. Now, whether you do file your nails first or use your cuticle tool first, either is fine. I prefer to get rid of pushing that back as much as possible so that I have a great canvas to work with. Now, this is one of the buffers that you'll get in your starter kit. So there are, I think, six sides, but we are going to work with step one. This is going to buff the nail. And by buffing the nail, you're going to smooth over the surface. Again, it's giving you that flawless base because nails you'll see here are kind of porous. They're uneven. They're not the greatest base to paint on naturally. So what's really important is that you smooth that out. So I'm going to be using step one. And with your buffer, you don't want to seesaw on the nail. If you get your hand and put it on your knee and rub really fast, you'll feel that heat and that friction. Nails don't like that. So it's really important that you lift the file. So when you're filing, you're doing nice, natural swoops across the nail. This is going to make sure you don't damage the nail because I know a lot of you are concerned when you're doing your nails at home, you don't want to damage. So none of this seesawing action. Nice, smooth, swift, sweeping motions across the nail. Now, something that I find a lot of people don't do when they're doing their nails at home, they kind of avoid the cuticle. And that's understandable. You really don't want to over file that area. But one of the best nail files that actually comes in the starter kit as well is this slim nail file. Now, most people will use this to shape the nail, but I actually have a second use for it. So you see the way we've got all the shine off here pretty much, but the cuticle, it's hard to get to with a buffer. So what I like to do is, put the file on its side and then just push gently around the cuticle area. This will just make sure the shine is removed. And that's why I personally prefer to remove any cuticle area first before filing, because you can really get that perfect base. You can also use this to go down the side walls here again, because that's going to be a naturally oily area. So you want to make sure and gently as well that you're just gently buffing that whole area around the nail. So that's slowly giving you a really good base. And wherever you see shine, you want to get rid of that. OK, so get your buffer again, your step one and just gently sweep across the nails. This is going to make sure that you have a perfect, flawless 
area to work with because what you don't want is any ridges and a lot of people do have ridges in the nails which is perfectly normal by the way but you want to make sure that's smooth because if your base isn't good you're going to end up applying the polish too thick and your 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 three week polish just won't last so I'm going to just gently go over the rest of them I kind of filed them roughly anyway so I wouldn't have to bore you with every single nail being done on camera but what I want to show you now is that you've got a nail that's quite dusty, okay? And probably your natural instinct is to wipe it with your finger or blow on it. And I want to discourage you from doing that. The reason being, you've created this perfect canvas. And if you wipe it with the edge of your finger, which might have natural oils in it, you're going to create a barrier between the gel polish and your nail. So one thing I really like to do is just get a bit of acetone. And this is on one of the 14-day manicure lint-free nail wipes. And you're just going to gently wipe around this will temporarily dehydrate the nail and get rid of any dust or lint that's on the nail again just giving you that perfect canvas to work with so I would do that for all the nails and now I'm going to apply the base coat so really there's a, a hard and an easy way to do this when you have a fresh base coat you get a lot of polish on the brush what's really key and I'm just going to try and angle it for the camera here is that you almost take off all the product that's, that comes on that brush when you initially open it and then just pop your brush back in and scoop a little bit onto the edge so that you have it just on the tip of the brush. And this is going to give you much better control of the product. You're not going to flood the cuticle. And then you're going to go at about 90 degrees. So your, your brush isn't flat. It's sort of angled slightly. And then go about two millimeters away from the cuticle line and then push upwards. This is going to make sure that you don't over flood the back area of the nail and that you don't hit off the skin unnecessarily. And then just make sure as well that you're getting down these side walls because your base is your canvas. Um, and what you'll notice is in between layers, each polish layer is tacky. Now I'm going to pop that into the lamp that goes in for 30 seconds. So each layer is tacky because it almost connects to each other. So what you want to make sure is that while you're in the middle, don't do anything else. Don't touch off your outfit. Don't go into the bathroom because you'll pick up little pieces of lint. And again, this is about creating the best canvas possible so that this time that you invest in putting your nail varnish on, it's going to last you up to three weeks. That's the hope. So this stays in for 30 seconds. And then sometimes if my nails are a little bit weaker or if I've got a client with weaker nails, now this was pre-builder gel, so we'll get to the builder gel in a minute, I might do a second layer base coat. So that is also okay to do because it's a nice thin canvas. So I'll just show you how I do that. Again, it's a very, very thin layer that I do. It's really just to make sure, and this is great if you're not confident doing your nails because if you've missed anywhere, you can... Uh, cover that again on the second coat again this is a very thin coat you're not doing anything thick and what's really important as well with your base coat is just to gently use the edge of the brush on the edge of your nails try and let that get back into focus and you're just going to swipe over the edge that's just going to cap that free edge in and make sure you don't get any chipping with the polish and pop that back in and what I would say is as well use a table, give yourself the room to work with and just make sure that your polish bottle stays away from the direct UV light because if you leave it there, it may um, cure under the daylight. So also be careful of natural sunlight as well. Um, and then I think the color I'm using is absolutely stunning, but I want to make sure I give you the name. It definitely comes in the starter kit when you select the best seller shades. Um, but this color is lipstick red, I believe. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So it's one you're going to be able to really see the detail on too. Um, so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so that also cures for 30 seconds. Pretty much every layer is 30 seconds with 14 day manicure aside from the builder gel. So again, just make your life easier. Take out the polish bottle, the brush and gently swipe. And what you want to do is just remove all the excess polish that's up uh, up around here so that it doesn't drip down while you're working. This just this is what the professionals do. This is what makes life easier when you're applying it at home. And again, we're we're going for two layers of color here. So we're not trying to get full color on our first coat. We just want to do the perfect base. So getting it on the tip of your brush like this is really key. And then again, not going straight into the cuticle line, but gently coming about two millimeters away and then pushing slowly upward. 
and then fanning it back down. And then you can gradually go closer as you feel more confident. But I would say if you're not confident going close to the cuticle line, come slightly away. What you don't want to do is flood the cuticle line. But look, it can happen. It happens to everyone, a slip of the hand. So for instance, there, a little mistake. Just get the edge of your nail or your cuticle pusher. And you're just going to swipe around the edge. Now, this is before it goes into the lamp. So you just want to make sure you get rid of anything around the cuticle line there, because once it goes into the lamp, it has dried and you really don't want to cause any overexposure to the skin around here because that can be dangerous. So then I'm going to pop that into the lamp. Again, that dries for 30 seconds. And what's really important is that you, you remember that there'll be a second coat. So if you feel like the color isn't punchy enough, don't panic. Try not to lash on a thick layer because fewer thinner coats will be more durable. It'll last longer. Think of it painting a wall. If you try and do three coats in one, it's not going to dry. It's going to look uneven. It's going to look lumpy and bumpy. What you want is a really, really thin layer. And that is what's going to get you your three weeks. Okay, so that's 30 seconds already. So now we're going to go in with our second coat. So again, cleaning off the brush so that you don't have drips. This will make your life so much easier. So again, I'm going to start on the side and just make sure I've covered all down the side walls. I'm going to push up to the cuticle a little bit here and gently work around that cuticle line. And then what's really important, as we mentioned with the base coat earlier, is just take the edge of your brush and cap that edge. And you may have seen me just gently fanning. So I'm going to try and show it to you from the side. What you don't want to do is press your brush down and let it fan. Stay slightly light with your brush and let it feather down the polish. This will make sure that you get a really, really even layer and it'll stop kind of brush strokes um, coming into your color. So really, really nice light feather strokes. And again, just cap that edge. I'm going to pop that in again. And if you're not sure, you can always do a third coat, but I would prefer to see three thin coats than one big thick one. So try and give yourself the time. Now I'm doing one nail here at a time just to really show you, but you can do each nail. And what I always say is if you do your bad hand first, that is always a good way to build your confidence because it is much harder to do the hand that you are dominant in. So definitely give that a go too. And so we're already 30 seconds, it flies in. And then what I love about 40 Day Manicure is their top coat. Now, from a salon's perspective, you used to get a lot of top coats that you'd have to wipe the sticky layer away. But each of these layers will be sticky and tacky. So I don't know if you can see that, but it is, it is tacky. So that is really just gripping to each other. It's like connecting and bonding together. But your top coat is... Your, your super shine, your super glossy coat. This will also help cover over any imperfections in your brush strokes as well. Again, not flooding your product on the brush, like a nice little bead at the very tip and not fanning your brush too much, just light, gentle strokes across the nail and just make sure you cover over every area. I'm just going to coat that nicely. And then again, really, really important that you do your little capping of the edge. That's just getting that brush around the tip because that's the bit that gets the most knocks. It's where you're picking off a label, you're doing something. That is the area that requires the most um, care and also the most consideration when you're applying your product. So again, we're going to go in there for 30 coats. And I mentioned to you earlier that I was going to touch on the builder gel. This is the builder gel here. So if you want to add a lot of extra strength, if you find your nails are weak and papery naturally, you can do a, a thin layer of the clear gel after your polish. Now, this would be before the top coat. Um, so you can do a thin layer of that and that will just strengthen it. You probably heard, you know, it's builder in a bottle. It's basically a gel a soakable strengthening gel in a bottle. It is so handy. That's what I'm wearing on this hand here. I wear it all the time. This is in shade pink lemonade. So I'm not actually wearing any um, color. This is just the builder gel and it's on about two weeks. So excuse it, but it's super, super strong. It keeps my nails really, really tough, especially when I'm working on other clients. And then I want to show you this. So this is the finished result. Um, that is completely shiny, not sticky, not tacky. And the one thing that I want to say is your cuticle oil. 
Now I'm going to start answering some of your questions. I'm going to do the rest of my nails so you can see the full result. But this product, the Cute Glow actually is stunning from 14 Day Manicure. But what this is going to do, it's going to add flexibility to your nails. So there's a few things I want to touch on as well that maybe a lot of people don't realize. So adding oil after is perfect. That's what we want because that will help keep your nails strong, keep them hydrated, but also add flexibility. So if your nail is super, super tough and you've got gel polish on, it can crack. So what's really important is that with strength comes flexibility. You want to have a bit of movement in your nail. And that's that's what Cute Glow does. It hydrates the skin around the nail, which is key, but it also penetrates through the new nail growing out here. This is, your nail is formed back here. Um, it's literally formed here and then grows out here. So when you apply cute glow you're catching that new nail growth so really really important to use your cute glow but I can't stress this enough after you've applied your gel because and while it's on so you can apply it every day twice a day but do not apply it on the morning or the minute you're about to apply your gel polish so just keep that in mind but that is key for adding strength and hydration now I'm going to go into a couple of your questions that you emailed while I do the rest of my nails, make sure I'm answering everything. Um, so do you need to take a break between wearing gel polish? No, actually. So while the nail, there is a living part of the nail back here, it's called your matrix. It's where the nail is formed. Nails actually are dead, flattened, keratinized skin compressed together. If you imagine them like thick layers of newspaper flattened together. So what your nails actually like is um protection uh so adding something like a gel polish can really really help protect your nails especially if you've got naturally weak nails i think there's nothing better than you know protecting them with something like a gel polish 14 day manicure but what i will say is don't take breaks in between unless you're going to to do a four week break it can take eight weeks for a nail to fully regrow from root to tip so if you're doing a two week break in between you're probably only getting maybe from here to here so you think about it, you, if you want to do a full break and let your nail fully regrow, that's absolutely fine. But a two week break doesn't help anybody and your nails actually like that protection. And I used to see it when I was in the salon, a lot of people would be really tempted in between like this layer to, you know, you filed it and it looks really dusty to go and wash their hands. But what a lot of people don't realize is nails are so porous that they actually absorb some of the moisture when, when you wash your hands and your nails will expand when they're wet and contract when they're dry. So if you wet the nail by washing your hands in between layers or just before you're about to apply, that can really affect how the product attaches to your nail because your nails are expanding and contracting and then the polish doesn't because it's it that's it's not in its nature to absorb water like that. So just remember immersing your hands in water, swimming, they're all things that can affect the strength of your nails. So definitely just keep that in mind. Um, and for those who've joined, I see there's a couple of people who weren't here maybe at the very beginning. I'm just using step one from the file. We have one. Here's one I did earlier. Um, and I'm just going around again, just making sure you really focus. I personally feel like this is where a lot of the issues are caused around the cuticle line and the tip so they're the two areas I tend to focus on um, when I'm doing this prep work here and I I still think what's key is giving them a quick wipe with a bit of the acetone the acetone comes in your starter kit and um, so a little bit of acetone will do the trick just make sure that you are getting rid of the dust as well. So using a fresh piece of the lint-free nail wipe. Cotton wool isn't great sometimes because it can leave lint behind. So just keep that in mind. These are the lint-free. They're a bit bashed from being in my kit, but these are the ones that I use from 14 Day Manicure. You'll see that on their site. And in case I didn't mention it, no, oh, I think I did, but I'll mention it again. I have a discount code. It's Pamela10. So if you do want to pick up any bits but I'm going to go through all the questions now and make sure I can give you some advice if you're not sure. Um, so we're getting there. Let me answer some more of your questions while I'm doing this. Um, so we don't need a break. So how do you not damage your nails when you're removing them? That's a great question. And I think um, what, again, probably what a lot of people don't realize is when you're removing them at home, the only part that isn't soakable is the top coat. So the base coat, the color, all of that will soak off. So what's really important is that you get your file and take away the shine from the surface before you remove it. But I have to say, there's one product from 40 Day Manicure that has my heart. 
I've used this so many times. This is the magic gel remover. This works so quickly. It limits your, your hand exposure to acetone. You're not soaking in acetone for half an hour. This removes it in minutes cleanly like clean off honestly it's one of those products that I'm like how did I survive without this and um, you can get that on their website so again all you do is it's like a thick gel texture so once you've taken the shine off you just paint that on and it lifts the product the product off I think a lot of people when they're removing them at home they get a bit impatient as we all do and maybe go in with the pusher when they're when it's starting to lift and do it too soon and take a bit of their nail off so you know, it has been attached to your nail for three weeks. So remember how that has been attached and then think about how gently you should be removing it instead of picking, peeling, biting. <laughs> We're all guilty of it, but try not to, to resist temptation. Um, hopeless when it comes to using my left. I, look, this is a question about how to do your non-dominant hand. And for most people, it is their, their left um, and I think it's it's difficult. Even I struggle. But what I, I one of my biggest tips would be to do it first, because I think you're kind of excited when you do your your the first hand and then you can get a bit you know, bored or whatever distractions happen at home and things like that. So what I would do is do that hand first and then try and do it at a table. I hear a lot of people say, oh, yeah, like I do them while I'm watching TV and like lighting is key. So even just putting a big light on so that you can actually see what you're doing and what you're working with, that will help. And even just doing that can can really make the difference. But obviously practice is practice makes perfect. Um, so, yeah, again, cutting cuticles is another question that came through. What does it mean? So this is the cuticle nippers um, that you can get on 14 day manicure. It's amazing. You can use it for hangnails. Like when I'm talking about hangnails, I'm talking about maybe that piece of skin there. What I wouldn't do is just go in and cut all the living tissue. The reason being, as I mentioned, your nail is formed just here. It's called the matrix. The cuticle actually provides a service. It's a waterproof seal. So it helps prevent bacteria getting in and causing damage here. So if you just cut willy nilly here, that can cause bacteria to get in. And we don't want that. But having said that, you don't want hanging skin off that's painful and then that can also cause infection so using something like this like a professional nippers it you know it is dangerous even in skilled hands so I would go easy on it and keep it purely for hangnails I wouldn't just cut the, all the skin off and as mentioned probably my number one tip is using a bit of that acetone on a lint-free pad and really going in there and just cleaning around the nails going around the skin and all over the nail. And then you'll kind of see that they slowly dehydrate. You'll see them kind of going a little frosty there. And that temporary dehydration is really key for longevity. It's one of my top tips, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's regular nail varnish or gel polish, it's what I use for everything. Just like cleaning your skin before you put on makeup. Um, I'm going to pop into the Q&A because we have lots here. So chipping on day two, that is down to your prep 100% and possibly just the thicker layers like doing fewer thinner coats as I mentioned will really really make the difference so as I showed you earlier I'm just using a tiny tiny bit on the tip and I'm going to go in there gently thin super thin coats are key here and then cap that edge God, I'm definitely going to put a facial on my hands now after today I'm traumatized <laughs> And just down the side walls, around the cuticle. And if you do hit off the skin, don't be afraid. Just get in there with your thumbnail and scoop around and get rid of any product excess. And a lot of people find that if they're a little bit slow working with the product, do two nails at a time and cure that for 30 seconds. Um, okay, I've used the gel colors with my lamp but have noticed some bubbling on them after they are cured. Is there anything I can do? So bubbling, again, can be if you're not curing it long enough. Or what you might find is if you're if you're kind of a slow worker, I'm not accusing you, but if you might be a little slow between nails, just do two nails at a time and cure for 30 seconds so that you're making sure that the product is, as you're applying it, curing under the lamp. And when we say curing, with gel polish, it won't dry from just being on your nail. It will only start to set once you apply it, once you pop it into the lamp. So that's really key. So if you're finding that by the time you get it into the, by the time you painted every nail, 
that some of the ones you did a couple of minutes ago are looking a bit funky or bubbly. Don't be afraid to just do two nails at a time until you build your speed up. It's actually a great way to make sure that you don't make any mistakes. If you're happy with your application, pop it in. As soon as it hits that lamp, it's curing. So try that. Also, just make sure that you're using the um, 14 day manicure LED lamp. I know you say my lamp. So just make sure because some um, UV lamps are not LED bulbs. Um, the 14 day manicure one is. So just double check that. Um, my nails are weak and bendy. What can I take or use builder in a bottle? Yeah, you can absolutely use the builder gel. Um, I think on, I mean, look, you can always invest in your nails and take supplements, but not, that doesn't always work. Like some people will always just have weaker nails and applying something like the three week manicure is key because what it's going to do is keep them strong. And if you like to have your nails looking good all the time, well then just put a bit of effort into the prep and do it every two weeks and that will keep your nails strong when I worked in a salon I rarely advised anyone to ever have a break you know and their nails got so long and so strong just purely from being consistent with good removal using good products like 14 day manicure that will help your nails um again I'm just going to do this in two so that you can see you can just cure them two at a time um I'm struggling to make my gel and builder gel last. They are lifting and peeling, which is destroying my nail. I think, Olivia, let me know if you're doing the prep the way I am. I think prep is really key. And, and much like you, I would have quite oily nail beds, which is often what causes lifting and peeling. So if, if the product is coming away from the nail, it means is something's happening at the very beginning stage that it's coming off. And... Um, when your nails are breaking and the product isn't strong enough, that's one thing. But lifting and peeling generally would tell me that there's a barrier um, and gel polish really does not like oils at all. It, it just doesn't stick. I mean, honestly, even regular nail varnish doesn't like it either. Um, but gel polish is is designed to last. So it really does require a little bit more prep. And I think um, what I might do if you were my client, what I would do for you for sure would be doubling up on wiping with the acetone so after I've prepped and filed I would give them a little wipe with some acetone wait until you can kind of see it you probably can't on this camera but it shrinks a little bit and dehydrates I would go in again and do that again and just make sure you're properly dehydrating that nail plate before you start with your base coat and then try fewer thinner coats because if you're getting peeling um I mean, look, if the first coat isn't working, then you that's your problem. But also if it's too thick, that can also be equally as much of a problem for the nail. Um, I hope that helps. Um, so can you show how to trim the cuticle safely without cutting, please? I personally, like I mentioned, would avoid trimming the cuticles. I think regular cuticle oil using a cuticle pusher, even getting the edge of, a, of um, this is my dress, obviously, but the edge of a towel and rubbing around the cuticle can help gently soften any skin there. Cuticle cutting would be my last resort. And that's purely because I know that we need it. We need enough of it to protect the nail. So I try to avoid it as much as possible. Obviously, if you've got thick cuticles, using something like a cuticle remover, there's one on the 14 day manicure site. It's really, really good. And that uses fruit enzymes. So what that does is it gently breaks down the dead skin, not mechanically by rubbing it, but actually it eats away at dead skin and gradually breaks that down to tame the cuticle. So that would always be my number one starting point is to get the cuticle right. Think of it like skincare. And then as a last resort, trimming away any hangnails or excess skin. So I love to change my nail color regularly, but worried, will I damage my nails with removing gel often? No, I mean, I know you've mentioned acetone or the e-file. I would use an e-file a lot. For those who don't know, an e-file is like an electric file. Um, again, that can be a fantastic product, but a little bit dangerous even in skill tan. So I would say go easy on the e-file and making sure that you're really not um, filing away to the natural nail. Like use your uh, gel eraser That's or um, magic gel remover. That's what I would use. Um, 
because that's just super gentle. Acetone is absolutely fine. As soon as you take your nails out, the acetone evaporates anyway. But what I would say is you definitely minimize the exposure to products when you're using something like the Magic Gel Remover because it's just so easy to isolate and put onto the nail. Um, having said that, acetone is absolutely fine too. But if I was to pick, if I was removing my color frequently, which I tend to do because I get a little bit bored, I would use the um, Magic Gel Remover from 14 Day Manicure. Um, I hope that helps. So it takes me three to four times to properly remove the gel polish. So there's one thing as well to remember if you're using the gel magic gel remover and it's a warm day or you're in the sun, it can evaporate faster than required. So what I would do tend to do is apply it to the nails after removing the top coat. So filing away that top coat, whether you've got an e-file or whether you've got a buffer, then apply the gel remover to the nails. You'll kind of see when that has actually started to evaporate. And then what I would do is apply it again. You can see I've made a little mess here while I was chatting. But again, just scooping it away with the edge of my nail to clean that up. Um, and then just keep reapplying it without pushing away with the metal pusher. Just apply it, let it do its thing. And I think it's just patience, really giving it time to work through the gel polish and break that down. So what else have we got? My nails are weak after I move the gel polish. Is this normal and how can I prevent it from happening? So there's a couple of reasons why it may feel that the nails are weaker. So your nails do adapt. So as time goes on, if you're wearing gel polish a lot, your nails enjoy that protection. Like I say, from things like water, your nails absorb that water and can get weak and irritated. So when you remove the gel polish, it's a bit of a shock to the nail because it hasn't been used to protecting itself it had that extra layer so what I would say is just be aware that your nails have maybe had a false sense of security while the gel, gel polish was on and also remember because nails get quite long when they have that added strength so when you remove your gel polish if you gained a lot of extra length like I tend to when I'm wearing the builder gel that's sort of what I would call a false length in a way because this is keeping them super strong naturally my nails would never get to this length. So just keep that in mind. And when you do remove product from your nail, take the length that has grown with that protection away so that you're not expecting your nails to maintain that same level of strength. Um, so just shorten them, take any length out of them so that there isn't a lot of pressure on the nail. Because remember, if you've got this thick layer, it's really helping support your nail. Without that you're probably not going to have the same level of strength to support a longer nail. So shortening them um, can really help with that. And also just increasing your cuticle oil, but also applying something as simple as a base coat. Let's say you don't know what 14 day manicure you want to have for the next week or whatever it might be. Don't leave your nails bare. Put a base coat on or a clear coat or a top coat or something like that. That will protect your nails from the daily washing. And, you know, you do when you've got gel polish on, you tend to be a bit more uh harder on your hands because you kind of know there's that protection it feels like comfortable so just be aware that your nails don't have that when you remove it and just be more gentle um what else have we got how do I get my cuticles to look good and clean when I do my nails so the first thing is pushing them back gently you may not get flawless results the first time I notice when I don't do my cuticles if I if I'm being bold and I skip it, like they start to grow unruly and uneven. So gently pushing them back all the time, like I was saying with the edge of a towel, the edge of your nail, like not harshly, but try and gently push them back. And if you're finding that you have a lot of excess skin, investing in a cuticle remover, like the enzyme one I mentioned, can be fantastic for just breaking down that dead skin gradually and eventually then you'll be able to tame those cuticles properly without nipping them all off. And um, that would be my goal if if my cuticles were out of control. Um, is there a secret to not flooding the cuticles on sides of the nail? I seem to take the nail brush too far and get some weird ridges around the cuticles. Yes. So let me show you now. I'm glad I saved a few nails. So I mentioned before that there's, I'm going to turn my nail to the side just so you can see. So when you take the, the brush out, you've got loads of polish like this. So this will work against you, okay? So bringing my, my polish bottle in. So when you take the polish out, come out to one side first, long sweep, come out the other side until the brush is relatively clear of product. 
And then this is a really great way to learn how to control the product. Just go back in and scoop a little bit out. If you want a little bit more, that's fine. But try and concentrate it on the tip of your brush. This will give you the best control. So now that we have it on the very tip, exactly where we want it, I'm going to turn my nail to the side just so you can see. So now turn your brush so that this little bit that you've got on the tip is facing your nail. And again, try not to fan the brush out. Your brush kind of wants to stay in the shape that it's in right now. It doesn't want to be spread and fanned out. So place your brush here, about two millimeters away from the cuticle line and just push gently upwards and drag down the nail. So then you're not having excess product around the cuticle. You're trying to spread the polish around without fanning your brush too much. And don't be afraid, like it, it is, if your cuticle line isn't perfectly even, give yourself a little bit of a gap. It's much more flattering than flooding the cuticle, but continue this way. So gently working the brush around with less product, you're going to have far more control. And just when you're finished, if you feel like it's a little bit bumpy, again, don't take your brush, like, like flatten it on the, on the nail like that. Gradually just pull light strokes. There used to be a thing when we were learning how to paint nails and it was like three strokes, as many strokes as you want. Just get that polish really nice and even. And if you feel like you've overdone it around the cuticle, just gently pull the polish down and work it. And then don't forget with the edge of your brush, just cap the free edge of your nail. And that will really, really help prevent chipping. I hope that answers your question, Anna, I think it was the last one. And um, removal always takes ages, even using the removal gel. Okay, you may not be filing the top coat away enough. So the top coat won't ever soak. So just gently buffing over the top is not enough. You kind of almost have to break the top coat seal to get to the polish. So you almost want to see a tiny bit of red on your buffer so that you know that all the top coat is gone because that won't ever soak off from the magic gel remover. So that does need to be removed. So maybe just going a little heavier on your buffing, obviously being as gentle as possible, but just try to make sure that all of the top coats are removed. And as I mentioned earlier, warmer environments, it can evaporate fast. So don't be afraid to just paint a thick layer of the gel remover on after maybe two or three minutes and do that until the polish lifts off. It will lift off, I promise. Um, so give that a go. How do I stop chipping at the end of the nails? Cap the tip. It could be your prep. Try wiping the nails with some acetone. Really just dehydrate that nail, making sure you're not washing your hands after you filed them. Because I would get a lot of... Um, chipping on my nails so I really really go in with my prep and make sure that I've, I've dehydrated it properly my thumbnails split at the corners any tips sometimes it can be the shape that you have um so an oval nail like mine for example is very exposed on the corners so it, it, if you do get a lot of chipping on the edges as in if they break here it may be better to look at a more squoval shape where you've got a free edge that comes out either side and that you can actually have a bit more strength when you remove the edges in like an oval nail shape like that you really do expose the edges so try a different shape it may help and um, also what you can do is with your builder gel you can you can over apply it on the edges slightly just to really strengthen them that can also be a great way um, and sometimes thumbnails are funny like they can grow in certain angles which is is hard and can make the nail more vulnerable so it may be just that you need to wear that nail a little bit shorter than the rest um i hope that helps also cute glow is always good if you get splitting could be dehydration um and brittleness in the nail so cute glow will always help um nail care with my gels peeling and stripping my nails they are very thin and weak any tips to have healthy nail growth? So again, cuticle oil is the really the best way to improve the health of the nail underneath. And you can absolutely treat the nail underneath your gel polish with cuticle oil because it will penetrate around the cuticle area, as I said, and catch that new nail growth as it's growing out. So don't be afraid to use that regularly while you've got your gel polish on because it is going to get to that new nail. It's going to help the edges of the nail and the underneath the free edge. So that is one of my number one tips. I think as well, while you're waiting for your nails to get a bit better, if you feel like maybe the last time you removed them, you went a bit too hard, don't be afraid to um, 
keep gel polish on and just keep your nails nice and short. If you do decide you want to remove your gel polish, maybe make an eight week plan of of when they're going to come off and shorten those nails. So a lot of times people do keep the length that has grown under their gel polish and then they're like, oh, my all my nails broke again. It is it could be a false strength or a false length that you got from the strength of the gel on top. So just keep that in mind that your nail is going to be extra exposed. And maybe when you take all the length out and you remove them properly, that you're not going to have that um, issue. Hi, what webcam are you using and the program? It's really HD. I don't know, but I will. I can't see what it is. It was amazing. Anyway, it's been really, really good. I hope the guys might be able to to pop that in and answer it for me. How long do you leave the builder gel in for? The builder gel takes a little bit longer. So it's 99 seconds on the low heat setting. Um, And again, you can use it on its own like I do, or you can use it over the top of your gel polish color. I love some of the pinky shades that they have. Um, Hopefully next time we'll get to uh, do a gel or a builder gel um, masterclass because I have some really great tips of how to use it. It, I would say if it's your first time using a builder gel, the texture is very different. So just keep in mind that it's a lot thicker and how you work with it is very different. What I might do is... um, when this coat's finished, I'll just show it to you on one of the nails so that you get an idea. Um, But I love, this is pink lemonade I'm wearing. And I seem to just, I just drift towards it all the time. It just matches everything I'm wearing. Um, But two coats and 99 seconds each, each and then the top coat. So how do you cap your nails when your nails are short? So similar to the way that I used my thumbnail to scoop underneath, I would be doing the same thing. So I would be capping straight down with a short nail and then using my nail to scoop away anything on the skin, very similar to the way I did around the cuticle line. What I'm going to do is just show you this builder gel. So this is the clear gel. Um, Hopefully my camera will focus there. So this is a much different texture. You might be able to see that already. It is you can see the string there. So so gel originally was this t- texture before gel polish was created. So it's really important when you're working with this. Again, don't make life hard for yourself. Swipe away that excess um, gel into your bottle and leave yourself with it on the tip so that you can control it. So what I like to do is, I don't know, hope you can see that there. I'll just wait till it focuses. So just again on the tip of the brush. And what I'm going to do is scoop it off onto the nail so once you've cured oh sorry scoop it off onto the nail so once you've cured your two coats of color you're ready for your builder gel so what you want to do is the little tip of the brush has a has a bit of a blob of gel on it you want to connect that with the gel that's on your nail and just gently work it around the nail and this is where you can kind of play with it a little bit you have a bit more room to work with this than with your gel polish texture so your gel polish texture will be a lot more thinner and smoother but this you can actually use again it's kind of dripping there so you can use the tip of your brush to connect with the gel that's on your nail and then just gently pull it around the nail so that you get it where it wants to go so I tend to get a lot of height in the center because that's where my nails are the most weak. That lady earlier said her sidewalls down here. What you can do is take it down the sidewalls. Again, if you want to make sure that you don't get off the sides, just scoop around with your nail. And then a really good tip because your nail, I suppose, in like when you look at them, they look flat. But your nails, if you think of them like a bridge, the strength is actually in the center. So what you want to do is I put my nail upside down and just rock it back and forth. This will pull that big bead of gel into the center exactly where we want it and create that kind of a small slight arch. So if you're unsure, so you can see now instantly I can see there's way too much on my tip there. This is not how I normally do my nails, by the way. I'm usually like right up to my eyes so I can see what I'm doing. So I would instantly be pulling this bead back into the center like that dragging it back and then cleaning my brush fully of all the gel well most of it and then just tidying up that edge there because what you don't want is blobs and that can be the danger with the builder gel that you just put too much on or too much gets on the tip can you see that there hopefully it'll focus for me now 
you know, just as we were getting on well with this camera. Anyway, I'm going to cure that before it blobs all over the place. So this is now going to go in for 90 seconds. And I'll come back and answer some of your questions. If you have a colored builder gel, do you put it on before the color gel for extra strength? So I would not use a color builder gel with color gel. I would be using them separately. So I would use the base coat, the prep as normal, the base coat, the builder gel, and then the top coat. So that's what I have on here. Um, I don't have any color on. That's just that gel. If you're using the builder gel with a color like the red here, then use it after. Um, there's a full step by step online, but I that's how I would do it. Um, I bought the better job, but I found it to be really thick and lumpy. Okay, so there, I hope those tips help you, but I do think we probably need a full session on this because I have done, when I've broken a nail, I've fully lengthened my nail with this builder gel. It has lasted three weeks. Like there's so much you can do with this gel. It's, oh, it's my favorite. Um, hopefully that has helped you. Cleaning off the brush is key. Like no matter whether you're using color gel, whether you're using builder gel, cleaning off that product is absolutely key. Um, you can get the acetone comes in the kit or you can buy it separately. So this is it here. It comes in a 120 mil. It's a great size. And that's on the 14 day manicure site. Is it a base? Is it base coat builder, then color or can it be base builder and top coat? So I'll tell you, I've used it both ways. 14 day manicures, step by step, how to get the most from the product would be to do your base coat, two coats of color and then your builder. But I have like this a coat of base coat the builder and then I've gone oh actually now I want to color I'm a weekend and I kind of want to put color on so I have actually done color over the top of it and I will follow all the steps I will buff it base coat color and top coat so you obviously save a lot of time if you add the builder with the color but if you if you change your mind it definitely uh, color does work on top of it um, hopefully that answered your question. I bought the clear builder gel. So do I apply it as the last step before the top coat or does it go on after the base and before color? I think that's kind of the same question. So you can do either. If you want to go, always go with the manufacturer instructions. So if, if 14 day manicure is saying it works best after, then stick with that. But like that, if you put it on and then you feel a bit adventurous and you want to get a bit of color, totally go for it. Um, do you put builder on a bottle on a naked nail? I don't. I like to do a layer base coat and mostly because um, the nail is quite uneven and it is hard to get builder to stick to a natural nail, especially the way you're you're putting it on. So what I would say is two coats of base coat or sorry, one coat of base coat, a thin layer of your builder and then a thick layer of your builder where, wherever you need the most strength. And that would be my advice. I'm just going to fix that camera a little bit. It's out of focus. Um, should we, should we use all sides of nail file, including smooth? So this buffer is fantastic. It doesn't just work for when you're using gel polish, but it's great for when you're removing it. So I would say when you're applying gel polish, stick to step one. That's all you actually need to use. But if you decide to remove your gel polish and you want to just bring your nails back to a natural shine, then follow the steps one, two, three, four, until you get to the final shine so this one is completely smooth and this will bring your nail up to a really high shine so that is really only for natural nails for applying your gel polish just stick to, to step one. Oh, sorry um any tips for short nails and maintaining as mine only last a week usually i really hope all my tips have been helpful because it prep is key because no matter what you do how thin your your color coats are if your prep is off and you've left any oils on the natural nail your snookered no matter how well you've applied it it's not going to last so I really hope those have helped and definitely just make sure that you are filing and taking the shine off all the way around the nail not just in the center um how do you stop polish from peeling I've used the polish but I've found it and the builder are peeling a lot of people are saying this and I I anytime that there's peeling to me it's something happening with the base it's not sticking. And this product, this is on two weeks. This is sticking. You know, there's nothing lifting here. So I think prep is really, really key. And I really hope that those prep steps will get your polish lasting you longer. Um, how do you do refills? I tend not to do refills. Um, so uh, just in case anybody doesn't know, refill would be like filing down the nail and filling in the gap. Um, I tend to remove it fully. Like it's quite a thin layer. So I'm not pushed about just filling in the back I also think you get a better finish when you remove it fully so I tend not to do a refill and um, I could be wrong now maybe there are some steps or tips on 14 day manicures website so double check it but I personally don't um 
how long do you cure the builder gel for? It's 99 seconds on the low setting. Um, do you have any advice about gel extensions? I would love to do a session on gel extensions. In fact, 14 Day Manicure has some amazing products coming um, all around that space. And I love doing gel extensions and there's a great product coming. You can also do gel extensions with your builder. Um, I've done it plenty of times, so I'd love to be able to show you guys that at some stage. Why do some professionals clip cuticles around the edge? I It pains me. I, I don't know. I think a lot of people, it gives them a really, really clean finish. And that is sometimes what, what can look really great at, straight after it's done. But it can be painful for anyone who's had their cuticles nipped in a salon. It can be sore. Like I would avoid it if you can. Um, do you recommend using a primer? Yeah, there's a fantastic primer on the 14 Day Manicure website, mostly to be used with acrylic. However, if I have somebody with super oily nail beds and even maybe if you used all these steps and you still are getting lifting or issues with longevity, primer is key. Um, it, it's a, I think it's a non-acid primer that they have. So it's super gentle on the nail as well. Can you show how to apply builder gel before the gel color? Sorry, I didn't do that today because this is really just about the basic step by step. But I'm sure 14 Day Manicure will put on a masterclass for the builder gel because there's just so many ways you can use it. Um, is it better? Is builder gel better as a base or a top coat? It's not a top coat technically, so it's not going to give you the super high shine that the um where are we the no wipe top coat gives you. So over the top of all of your um polish whether it's the builder gel or the top coat or the sorry or the color coats always use a layer of the no wipe top coat for super high shine and what that will also do is it's got uv protectors in it so it has an anti-fade technology so it'll help especially when you're using kind of pale colors or nude shades it'll help stop it fading um false sense of beauty. um can you do base builder in a can you do base, then builder in a bottle and top coat, or do you have to use color? You do not have to use color. So that's me without my color used here, which I think is amazing. And there's actually, I think there's like 20 shades, could even be 20 shades of builder gel. So there's loads depending on your taste. Um, how best to shape nails? Mine always break when I shape them. I probably didn't go into this actually. I'm sorry. Got a bit nervous. Um, but this is what I would use to shape a nail. And again, much like my technique of not seesawing the nail file, I absolutely believe in long sweeping motion. So when you're going for like an oval nail, for example, you will swipe from side to center. Sorry, I'm going to try and get that side to center so that you're getting a nice edge and always mirror what you're doing on the other side. So try not to over file one side to another. And you're not filing directly like this. So this will make it really hard to shape. You're actually pulling the nail back to like, or the nail file back to about 90 degrees and using sweeping motions to gently file the nail. When you're doing a square shape, you're just going to do long sweeping motions across the nail to get that fine edge. And then always make sure that you go in the side walls to clean up that shape as well. I hope that helps with the filing. Again, we could do a whole thing on different shapes and different ways to file um how do you shape an almond nails on slightly shorter nails please so almond shape here's an almond shape for you really requires a bit of length and you'll see why because you kind of taper in the length slightly 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 and then it goes into that kind of nice soft point if you've got shorter nails you're going to make your nails look wider if you make them oval you really actually need a small bit of length so what i would suggest is Go for a round shape and then as your nails start to grow, slowly taper in the edges as it's growing. But what you really don't want to do is make your nails look stumpy. And if you don't have the length, an almond nail can really shorten your nail. What you're really looking for, the perfect nail is three quarters pink to a quarter white. That is what you're looking for. So if you try to get a, an even balance in terms of what pink to white you have when you got when you're at when you're trying to grow your nails that's when an oval shape can really come into its own but what I would tend to do is stick with round until you get a bit of length in and then you can slowly start to take in the edges but what's really key about an oval nail is the graduating nature of the side walls so you're not going into a point and you're not flattening the top but you're really gently taking in both sides a bit at a time and that will give you the perfect oval shape and um, you can see this nail is a bit shorter than this hand 
and I've sort of gone more rounded with it and less oval. So the shorter your nails are, the further I would go from oval. I hope that helps. Um, are you applying gel polish on top of two layers of builder gel? No, I was applying the gel polish on top of two layers of base coat. And that's just my preference. You can do one layer of base coat, which would be absolutely perfect on most people. I just have quite oily nails. So I tend to do two layers of base. Um, and how many coats do you apply gel polish? I do two coats. Again, if you're a novice and you're struggling to get your color right, or you're using one of the milky or nude shades, go for three coats if you need to, but thinner coats are always key. Um, you can use the magic gel remover on builder gel. It would be a bit slower. So I would probably drift towards acetone, but just making sure that you file that top coat off and then layer up the gel remover. I'll actually just show you how I use the gel remover. Where have I put it? Um, here it is. So just to show you how much, like I'm not wiping this off. I'm getting a good load of it on and I am plopping it on the nail like that. I'm not being... Uh, shy with the amount of product I'm using so getting it on nice and thick that is how I use the gel remover and then when that starts to evaporate because it does evaporate just applying a little bit more and continuing until it lifts um the correct way I hope I have talked you through the builder gel as much as I can today um let me see how do we file nails properly how often should I apply cuticle as often as you can remember twice a day if you can um is uv lamp harmful to hands no it isn't the voltage the wattage of the uv bulbs is so low there's no danger to your hands i've seen a few articles float around recently you've more danger driving the car without spf on your hands than you do using your your lamp every two weeks um does the nail remover it it just remember the builder gel is slower to dissolve so just keep that in mind and um, sometimes it can just be easier to soak in acetone than to be reapplying the builder or the magic remover gel but I love the magic remover gel and would use it on on my builder um with builder gel do you apply normal base coat first I think I've answered that um go through how to remove them so I'm not doing that today but there is a great video that I actually I think it's the video I filmed it's up on the website of step by step exactly how to do it every oh actually it's on my Instagram I have every method that you can use to remove um this is still my favorite the magic gel remover and um, you will be able to watch it again Rachel it is recorded and will be sent to you after this um cleaning up around the edge of the nail it's been a little messier yeah so you can um, if you if you're not comfortable using the edge of your own nail, what you can do is wrap your um, cuticle pusher in your lint free wipe and then just go around the edge like that. I would avoid um, cotton buds because the, the fluff, these are lint free, so you can really get around there. But I still think the best method is your own nail because you can really just get in and clean that up and um, for future masterclass can you do ombre oh hopefully hopefully we'll have some other masterclass coming oh thank you Claire you've enjoyed it I'm glad um hopefully Aoife you've asked how to remove them this is how I would remove it so I, I didn't buff the surface because I just wanted to show you how much I use but if I was to I would be using step one or this um I don't know what number that is and filing off the top coat but again if you want to go onto my Instagram there is a step-by-step -step on all of the methods of removal and there's also a step-by-step -step on the 14-day manicure website um any more oh I'm so glad you've all found it super helpful I think there's one thing in the chat oh the camera is the Logitech Ultra HD Pro that's the webcam Thank you, Juliet, I presume, for giving me that information. And guys, thank you so much. I hope you will head on over to 14 Day Manicure, use my code PAMELA10 and pick up any products. My DMs are open. If you have any other questions that I've missed, you will be getting a recording of this too. Um, but yeah, use my code and get an exclusive 10% off. And to tell you the colors again, so I'm wearing lipstick red. This is the, the red shade. I have on this hand, pink lemonade. The builder gel I used on top was the clear. And then this is the cuticle oil and the magic gel remover. I hope everything else I'm pretty sure is included in the starter kit. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions. I'm just going to double check if there's any more. Um, thank you so much for joining me. Um, my Instagram is Pamela underscore Laird. You'll see me tagged on 14 Day Manicure anyway. Um, thank you so much. I'm so glad you found it helpful. I will pop in my Instagram name here just so you can see it in the chat. 
hopefully everyone can see that. And the code is, I hope it's not capitals. Let me just double check the code. So it should be Pamela 10. Oh, it is capitals. Sorry, let me put that in into the chat here. Code is Pamela 10. So use that at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Um, thank you so much, everyone. This has been so fun. Um, and again, if you've any other personal questions or if you feel like I didn't answer anything my dms on instagram are open give me a shout and yeah keep the email where they send you this link so that if you don't have the starter kit you can um follow along when you do or when you need to look back for any expert tips um but yeah look after your nails guys and have a lovely tuesday evening and i will see you soon